Hey, we're back here with Susan Haypatrick and Hatton Lemon, and they're here to talk you to us about <laughs> more in terms of the mail-in ballot. And if you haven't got your mail-in ballot, where you can find it, all that stuff. So please, take yeah, it away. Go right ahead. <laughs> well, I think it's really important for voters to recognize the fact that they have a ballot. It's arrived already. So if you have a big stack of mail somewhere on a table in your house, it's a good idea to go through that stack and find your ballot. Because if you're registered to vote and you're an active voter in Missoula, then your ballot was mailed out last week. And you want to make sure you return that in the mail by October 30th. So before Halloween, if you're going to put a stamp on it, get it in the mail by the 30th. Mm -hmm. If you want to turn it in in person, there are locations all around Missoula that will be available on November 3rd, including every single elementary school in Missoula. Perfect. Great. Great. So um, I already got my mail-in ballot, so I'm taking care of it. And if you don't have your mail-in ballot, you can go to the elections office at the county fairgrounds every day between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Re-register, change your address, Great. register right up on, and on election day. Perfect. Great. For all those irresponsible people like me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's true. Even if you've changed your address, you mm -hmm. might not remember that you've changed your address yeah. and the elections office sent your ballot to some other house. Yeah, it's very true. And one more quick thing. We want people to vote both sides of the, of the ballot. If you live in the elementary district, there are two ballot issues on your ballot. You have to turn it over. <laughs> okay. So and you're you, not done. After and you just got to make sure one. that you um, look at both sides anyways of the ballot. Because right. you right. don't know whether or not you vote on yeah. something, you know. And so there's a difference between if you live in the city and if you live in the county. Can you guys tell us about that? Sure. If you live in the city, you're in both school districts, both the elementary district and the high school district, and they're two separate bonds, one for K through 8, one for high school. If you live sort of outside the, the core of the city, you're just in the high school district, hmm. and you vote only on the high school bond. Okay. And then so those people that live outside the district, they can, of course, vote on the elementary school bond too, right? It won't no. be on their ballot oh. because they have their own elementary schools that oh. feed into the Missoula oh, County Public right. School okay, high makes, schools. Okay, that makes more sense now. Oh. Nice. And another cool thing you can do if you want to return your ballot early and you don't want to put a stamp on it but you want to drop it off and you want to make sure you get that I Voted sticker, they have those at the fairgrounds and the elections office. I know, I'm a big nerd. I love to parade around. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have it on this morning. <laughs> Status symbol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get specific. So tell, let's do, tell us about um, technology. That sure. Need to be updated. This is the most fun part of my job is talking about how we're going to update every single one of Missoula schools with new technology. So we want to first say we are so thankful to voters who approved an increase in our technology levy in 2013. That levy is designed to pay for the equipment that students and teachers use in their hands, you know, computers, iPads, laptops, things like that, software, training. What it doesn't pay for is all the wiring behind the walls that really makes those devices sing and move quickly. Hmm. So what we've built into this bond request is updated wiring for every school, updated switches, which help all of the traffic flow throughout the school correctly, and a wireless access point in every single classroom. Because we know not only with sort of mobile technology and the changes in 21st century education, but also with the expectation. I think there's a really funny graphic out that's Bloom's taxonomy, you know, and it shows basic needs in the, the or it's Maslow's hierarchy, actually. <laughs> basic needs right. before food, water, and shelter are Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi. <laughs> um, so we know that people come into our schools, they expect the lights to turn on and the water to run, but they also expect Wi-Fi to just work. And right now we only have about 30% of the density we want. Oh, so wow. teachers can't really teach and access the internet easily and students can't learn. Testing is interrupted. It's really very, very frustrating trying yeah. to get online now and that's what one of the big things that these bonds will fix. And so what, what school do you say has the biggest problem? Well, I would say with regard to technology, the school that's got the, the highest ramp up time mm -hmm. is probably Washington Middle School right in the center of town. They're a school that only has one network drop per classroom on average. So imagine all the different things you might want to plug in to get onto the internet. You know, several student computers, a projector, a teacher computer, a printer. All of those things are competing for one place to plug them in in that school. Oh, so wow. that's what I mean. The wiring is sort of non-exciting, but it's so essential. It's the stuff that you don't see and you don't think about. You just assume it's there. It's not there. Wow. 
that sounds really hard. <laughs> 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 and so, um, what besides technology, what other main issues are you guys focusing on? Well, keep in mind that this bond issue is going to cover three main things. Okay. Technology is one of them. Updated safety and security is another. And then adding capacity and updating our classroom learning environments to accommodate 21st century teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those are our three main focuses of this bond. And, and reducing overcrowding as well. That's right. Keep in mind by 2017, so next school year, our elementary schools will not have space for the students in them. I mean, we make space and we find ways to fit these kids, but unfortunately that includes janitor's closets, storage Bathrooms. closets, taking mm -hmm. computer labs out of production and turning them into classrooms because we don't have places to put those elementary students. We're seeing a lot of growth in Missoula, which is a huge bonus. We all love that. It's mm -hmm. great for our economic vitality, but we need to find a place to put those students and educate them in a very you know, healthy, productive way rather than in just a make-do way. Yeah. But also with some of the growth that's um, it also helps offset some of the costs. Right, for these it schools. reduces the tax burden on on people for, for in paying for the bonds. As our tax base increases, our individual obligations will decrease over time. Also important to remember, we're not going to issue all of these bonds at once yeah. if these measures pass. But that simply wouldn't be responsible. We are going to issue some of them and, and phase these projects in gradually as the school district can manage the projects and as the local construction industry can absorb a project of this magnitude. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say? Yeah. You know, the other thing I wanted to identify, we've had a lot of questions from folks saying, how come you haven't done this over time? How, how did we get to this place? And I think the recognition of the difference between a building reserve levy, which pays for maintenance that can happen over time a little bit each year and a bond which pays for large capital projects is really important so when you have something like the roof at hellgate high school which would cost half a million dollars to replace in one year a building reserve would never provide the district that much funding in one year to actually get that done so that's why we're asking voters for a bond project so we can actually fund all the improvements yeah, it seems to be more cost effective to do it all at once rather than over time. And one of the things that um, people are also asking is like, what is the money going to? Like, like if there's like a receipt, something that they can look up, mm. well, where can they find this? Well, that's a great question. So all of the estimates for what we'll spend on each school are on our website. So if you go to mcpsmt.org, you'll see a cost breakdown for each school in those major categories. I think in terms of reporting out to taxpayers what we do with the money, should the bonds pass. We'll also have places on our website that will be available so people can see what final costs look like. Great. 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 And so where can people find more information? mcpsmt.org. <laughs> uh, click on the Smart Schools 2020 icon and also yesformissoulaschools.org. Great. Great. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you. We will be right back after this. I'm a junior at Sunville High School and I need a smart school because I want to be able to study political science when I graduate. I want to be able to focus on learning and not waiting for slow technology. I want to be able to focus on learning, not sweating in August and freezing all winter long. MCPS is hosting community open houses in every school. Learn how that impacts students like me. Have the opportunity to provide input and ask questions. Get smart about our public schools. So visit a Smart Schools 2020 open house. Please visit www.mcpsmt.org. 